Wow, being in Vegas is so exciting. I'm gonna try and catch a show and nothing else. Now day two is when CES really gets started with press conferences from AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel, AKA Team Red, Green, and Blue, RGB. Did they do that on purpose? We're gonna start with the announcement that NVIDIA saved for the last part of their conference, the RTX 3090 Ti. It's real, even though NVIDIA's Jeff Fisher kept calling it the 3090 Ti for some reason. I think the camera crew was too scared to correct him. It's a T-T-I! It's a T-T-I! Listen to Andy. Jeff didn't say much about it other than to expect more details later this month, but he talked more about the new RTX 3050, saying it will, unsurprisingly, outperform the GTX 1050 and 1650 for just $250, which is the actual price you'll... Pay. Gamers on the go will have more options for gaming laptops equipped with the new mobile versions of the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti, but the most interesting thing Team Green announced today may have been its collaboration with manufacturers on 27 inch 1440p G Sync displays with up to 360 hertz refresh rates and Nvidia Reflex. That's kind of like the laundry list of all the good stuff you want in case you were wondering. Man, I wanna see those roll out almost as bad as the weird car AI assistant they showed off during all the car stuff at the end of the stream. We get it, Jensen likes cars, we don't, skip it. Next up, AMD, who announced the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. <laughs> too many letters. The first processor with the company's vertically stacking 3D V-cache technology, apparently allowing it to beat AMD's own Ryzen 9 5900X and Intel's Core i9-12900K, making it the world's fastest gaming processor, according to Lisa Su anyways. She is a doctor, I will keep saying that. AMD also announced its lineup of Ryzen 6000 series processors for laptops, not desktops. Once again, AMD is skipping a generation there and will be releasing the Ryzen 7000 series on desktop later this year. Built on the Zen 4 architecture with support for DDR5 and PCIe 5.0, and it will also come with a new LGA socket. Bye-bye backwards compatibility, I guess. What do you think this is, a freaking Xbox? They're really good at it. Finally, AMD announced a budget GPU of their own, the RX 6500 XT, and it's only $199. That's $50 cheaper than Nvidia's price. Whoa, <coughs> I got it. What? Oh, sorry, I forgot which timeline I was in there for a second. Things were, things were priced normally. It was great. And Team Blue didn't let AMD's blustering go unchallenged. Intel said to watch out for a new KS series processor, probably the rumored Core i9-12900KS, to arrive later this year with a 5.5 gigahertz boost clock. But even if that doesn't win the gaming crown, Intel says their new 12th gen H series mobile processors are the best for gaming. And furthermore, they've got a new P series lineup for high performance thin and light laptops too. Now. Not to disparage Intel, but what we're all really waiting for are Team Blue's Arc desktop GPUs, which did not make an appearance today, and which have been promised to release by March. Those are expected to make use of Intel's Deep Link technology to combine their performance with the CPU's integrated graphics. And that'll be so cool and very important, probably for the metaverse and, and the future. It's gonna en en enable experiences. <sighs> Just give us the freaking GPUs. Andy's NFTs will be high resolution. <laughs> now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by my special friends at Seasonic. They worked really hard on the Prime TX 1000 watt power supply. Have you ever built one of those? Of course you haven't, because you haven't been making power supplies for more than 40 years. Do you even know how to certify a power supply with an 80 plus titanium efficiency rating? Or to make it fully modular with fluid dynamic fan bearings? or even to give it a 12 year warranty? That's what I thought. So get over to seasonic.com or click the links below because they already did that stuff and I love them. Quick bits were made to be enjoyed quickly. Don't hold them in your cheeks like a chipmunk puffing them out, that's weird. LG had a conference today too, but they didn't have a lot of real innovative stuff to show off other than the actually kind of cool, brighter EX OLED tech they showed off last week. They had a fancy car display called the Vision Omnipod. <laughs> and another one of their Chloe guide bots. But that's the thing about CES, you know, you gotta show up even if you don't really want to. It's like Thanksgiving. 
Unfortunately for LG, Sony and Samsung did bring something interesting to the table, with Sony being the first to show off a 4K TV built with Quantum Dot OLED technology, which brings together the color saturation of LCDs with the perfect blacks of OLED. Samsung is expected to launch a QD OLED TV at their conference tonight, along with a QD OLED gaming monitor. Alienware, though, already showed off there, so once again, the moral of the story is better displays are coming, and LG missed out, but the a they have really cool washers and dryers. Qualcomm made some announcements today, saying they've formed another partnership with Microsoft to make custom chips, this time for new AR glasses, and they're also getting serious about processors for autonomous cars. Now, if Qualcomm and Microsoft's SQ1 and 2 chips are any indication, this news isn't particularly exciting, but maybe they just feel more comfortable holding each other, soothing each other, every time Apple announces new M1 chips. The pain is less like that. Asus showed off some new laptops, but the most interesting one is definitely the Flow Z13, which is the company's latest take on a Surface Pro style two-in-one that can hook up to an external GPU for extra gaming chops. It's like a refined version of the mothership prototype they sent Linus, and I think LTT might have a video on it soon? Hmm? <laughs> okay, we'll see. <laughs> And Dell debuted some new laptops of their own, by which I mean new laptops that copied Apple's designs from five years ago. The new XPS 13 has something like a touch bar, but worse, with capacitive buttons that can switch from a function row to a media controls row, and instead of putting in more ports, uh, like the micro SD card slot in its predecessor, this one has only two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Dell, come on, come on, we're past all that. Try to keep up. And I'm gonna try to keep up with all the news this week. Jeez Louise, there's a lot. You should come back tomorrow to stay up to date. Share in my pain. Oh, it's real.